welcome back this is going to be a very short video on structural change models so structural change which is also known as parameter instability test as the name suggests uh, in all the parameter instability tests we check for instability in the parameter so in many linear models for example the arima models and similar kind of that we assume that the parameter is constant that there is a over the year there is no change in the parameters so by parameter here i mean both the intercept and the slope coefficient so uh, and uh, but what happens this uh, parameter sometimes changes if there is any major event happened in a particular year that is high chance that the the slope coefficient or the intercept will change so to in order to measure in order to find out in which year this structural change is happening in a time series we have many tests and when we are doing any particular econometric analysis and if you are not considering the structural changes then the result which we will get uh, might be inconsistent the first and foremost step before incorporating the structural changes in the model is to find out in which year particularly there is changes in the parameters of a particular time series so in order to do that there are many tests so both uh, and uh, one can divide them into two groups those are exogenous structural break structural change models and endogenous structural uh, break models uh, and uh, in the exogenous structural uh, change uh, model test uh, we know a priori that 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 the and we assume there that there is uh, the structural break happened in a particular year for example in when we are looking at the gdp data of india we know that there is uh, there might be a structural change or structural break in the gdp series uh, in the year 1990 because during that period there uh, was a major change in the economic structure india went for economic liberalization and uh, because of that uh, one can uh, argue that uh, all these economic indicator might uh, have undergone a uh, shift uh, during that period and uh, and uh, uh, that that can happen so uh, these are the similar kind of similar kind of major events will result a change in the uh, parameters of uh, a particular model or their shift in the time series from one regime to another regime so in most of the exogenous structural break test we assume that uh, a particular year might be a potential break year and uh, and from that period we divide into two uh, the whole series into two parts in first part uh, uh, first part which is before to the break and the second part which is after to the break in most of the exogenous uh, structural break test what we do we compute the residual sum of square then of both the series separately then compute the residual sum of square of the whole series then using a test we find out whether there is any significant difference in the uh, residual sum of square of the 
both the uh, series before and after structural break if there is any structural any uh, break uh, any significant difference in the residual of both the series then we say that the particular year is uh, a break year and uh, if there is there is no significant difference we say that okay in the series there is no uh, particular uh, structural break so uh, suppose you have a 50 year time period then uh, it is going it is very tedious job to see uh, like uh, to find out uh, the particular year you have to go one year two year three year three potential year so that takes a lot of times time to do it and it is very laborious job to avoid this problem uh, the endogenous structural break test uh, arrive and uh, Bai and Peran proposed a endogenous structural break test in today's video I am not going to implement the endogenous structural break test I will cover that in the next video and uh, what I am going to do is that uh, two test uh, the Kusum test and uh, F test. So uh, these tests uh, are lie under two broad group. The first broad group is the generalized fluctuation test framework. The second one is F test framework. In the generalized fluctuation framework, framework uh, the cumulative uh, this cumulative uh, sum test uh, lies, and uh, under the if test framework you have chow test super test etc so and all these tests are based on the null hypothesis that there is no structural change in the time series alternative is that parameters vary over time so if we are rejecting the null hypothesis uh, then uh, then uh, we will establish that the parameters of uh, the particular time series vary over the time so and uh, as i told i will cover these two tests uh, the kusum test and if test and uh, what we i will do i will uh, i have the data of net domestic product at factor cost of india at 2004-5 base year so i will take that data and try to implement these two models kusum test and kusum test and uh, f test so to before going to implement those tests we have to load certain packages so as i told in my previous videos also that uh, jew package is uh, essential and uh, most of the time series packages are based upon jew uh, or some part of Jew, uh, then uh, this struct change uh, package here. Uh, this package is particularly important for uh, the all the uh, test which we are going to do. It covers both the exogenous structural change uh, test and the endogenous structural change test as well. Then we have the uh, T series uh, library. Uh, T series here we uh, incorporate uh, like this this package is basically uh, uh, important for the time series data and read excel is for uh, importing the excel data into R so as I told I am I am taking the net domestic product at factor cost 2004 5 uh, base here now if I'll, I first what I have to do I have to run this I have to call this packages by running library and this one uh, okay now it is there now i have to i uh, imported the data under the name ndp so if i'll run it now uh, my data set is within the r now now if i'll click view it will come in a moment see you can see that the data is in log format and uh, I know that this data starts from 1970 
and continue till 2016 so and let's see yearly data so for any kind of time series model first requirement is the data should be in time series format here the data is not in time series format format because uh, it might be in uh, a data uh, frame format so we have to change the thing into time into a time series data so as i told this data data starts from 1970 and continue up 2016 with the frequency of one since it is a yearly data if it would have been a quarterly data the frequency uh, here i would have write it for for month data i i, I would have uh, write 12 Uh, here, but since this is a yearly data, I am writing frequencies one, and the simple command for converting the time series into time series data is TS. So I am saving saving in the same name NDB. So if no, if I run it, now what you will see here that is saying the time series data there is one to fourteen observation uh, with frequency one starts from nineteen seventy to two thousand sixteen. okay this is done what i need is a time variable so i since it is 47 years i generated generated a time variable called uh, time uh, and you can generate any uh, numeric values with intervals also by writing this command c bracket starting and end uh, then uh, then uh, this is done what we have to do is that now go for checking for the structural change in the model so before going to check uh, the structural change by using the kusum and f test statistic what we will do is that we will plot the data then we will try to find out from the graph that uh, uh, the potential break years so if i'll plot the data now it's done now if i'll open it this data uh, 1970 to 2016 this you can see here that i uh, during 1978 79 the date there is a change in the trend of the data it it fell then it started increasing during 1990 uh, during that time there is also a little upward movement in the data so but from here you can't exactly tell that uh, this particular year uh, in this particular year uh, that there is a structural change in the data we just observe that these two period might have a, uh, like be our potential structural uh, change structural break period in the net domestic product of india so uh, then uh, uh, since that the from the graph only we can say that much now we will go for the kusum test so since it is a uh, the kusum test lies under generalized uh, fluctuation test framework so i just uh, write a name wrote a name called gft and uh, to do the kusum test you have to call the function efp and the variable name ndp since in my data there is only one variable is there log of uh, ndp and uh, the data frame contain only that variable that's why i am writing ndp here there is absolutely no problem if if you are writing the uh, data frame name when I mean, there is only one data set then i am reversing it over time then type of test and i want to do kusum test so if i run it now uh, it's done then uh, uh, what i will see from here that this test will not the kusum test will not give you any statistics what uh, best it will give you it will give you a plot and to uh, uh, bandwidth and if the plot uh, the graph is going uh, above the bandwidth and at the maximum point the maximum point you will say that the maximum peak point you will say that the break might happen in that particular year so if i'll plot that now i'll open it zoom it little so if i'll zoom it 
I don't know why it is not getting zoomed. It's because this is okay. Now you can see that the during this period, as I was saying, that during that period only 1978 79, the this uh, line went uh, empirical fluctuation process went above the uh, bandwidth and around 1979 uh, there is a peak and during and this time also this is around 2008 so uh, and it went uh, be below or uh, exceed the bandwidth so we can say that around 2008 and 1979 there is uh, there is a structural change in the there are two structural change in the NDP data so this is uh, but we don't know like what is the interval and uh, we can't say the, the test statistics also from this so uh, we will say that okay these two years are the uh, are uh, where there is a structural change in the data that's it so then uh, this is the Kusum test now we will do the F test the finding out the F test is also easy so uh, here uh, you have to call the function f starts so i am gen giving a new name called fnd then f starts function i called the uh, my variable ndp for which i am going to check the structural change then i am regressing it over time if i'll regress it over time it's done now if I plot it, you will see a different plot here. What this uh, graph is saying is around 1991 there is a potential break. There is a, this 1979 there is not. Because in both the tests we choose the maximum point of the curve. So if it is reaching the maximum at around 1991 we can say that this year is a particular year where there is a structural change in the data whereas in the person test we saw that there is a two structure there are two breaks in the NDIP data these two tests are different uh, and uh, they are uh, you know computation process is also different that's why they are giving two different results but since uh, it is just uh, kind of uh, you know uh, I don't know it is not that much efficient in comparison with the endogenous structural break test so this is it for today's video what I will do that uh, I covered these two tests in this video then in next video I will do biparentes that is a more robust and sophisticated technique available now for checking parameter instability or what we call structural change in the data thank you very much for watching see you in the next video and another important thing is that if you find any mistake if you can please comment on the uh, description below i would be more happy i'll correct it yeah that is thank you